Hello there guys, me again Brian Copple, the, the stories in the day, as you know because I was there. I was born in 1964, so in the 1980s and 90s I was well established, everyone knew me. <clears throat> anyway, you know, I got to meet Lee and everything. And when we teamed up, Lee was telling me stories. So he said, haven't you, I can't believe you haven't been shot. I said, what do you mean you can't believe I've been shot? He said, See that? you've got that much bottle, you're just kicking doors in, like you're not fucking bothered. He said, there could be somebody in there with a shotgun or anything, handguns or anything, you're just not bothered, are you? you don't give a fuck, are you? you're just not scared and out, are you? And he said, I've never, been, I've never met anyone with so much bottle as you in my life, he said to me. He's having a laugh with me in the car, and it was a, it was a Saturday afternoon. And he was going, yeah, he said, no problem. And he was showing me how he got shot. He, he, his foot was shot, big hole in his foot. Now, we used to drive the car, the kid, the young lad used to drive us, now I'd be in this side, the passenger. And he'd be in the back, and he'd have his foot over the back of me, like on the chair. And be fucking big hole in his foot. And he was smoking the, the, um, the cannabis and that, obviously for the pain as well. <clears throat> and I used to go mad with him because he was all smoking that. And he was, I was telling him, he was saying, I said, do you say, no, it just stops the pain as much. And he gives him a giggle type thing. So I understood that because it was there. And <clears throat> a lot of pain, but the hole in his foot was massive. So anyway, he was telling me what happened. I said, what happened like Lee? He said, well, I'd had the first shooting with that idiot. And he come out, to, pulled up in the car. And the driver sat in the car and the other one jumped out with a shotgun. But he was about 10 feet away from Lee. I, I've told you this story, but I'll tell you again. And Lee, he put the gun at him. I want to fucking shoot you, Duffy. He shouted, so he shot him. But he pointed the gun at the at his legs. So Lee jumped like that and split his legs in the air. So the pellets nearly all missed him and only, only a few pellets hit him. So anyway, he ran off the drive, the lad ran off the drive. They got them and they, were, they got caught, they got jailed then. So the next ones were throughout the area. Some people say Leeds, some people say Nottingham, some people say different areas, different areas, but the same people try to get him shot in the garage. There was room with it, they put the money up to get him shot. So these come through, these lads, say they were black lads they were. So he was in the blues because he loved the blues. He got them all the black lads in there and he got them all like, like uh, Jimmy Murray and all them who used to make us a curry and that, and just, just loved the blues. So he was in the blues that night. He'd been down the town there a few drinks with my friends and uh, he did a few drinks in different pubs. So he always used to go to the blues because he liked the, the, the music and I wasn't really into that music. <clears throat> but he liked it, like, he liked it a lot. And he used to go there anyway to wind down and talk to the lads and that and just dance about and mess about in the blues. So he did the blues, he said, and he said he was talking to a few people and he went back out and he was having a joint on the door. And he seen these black lads, he said, they're coming in. So he walks in the, the club and he was a bit, he said, I, I knew straight away, he said, I had a feeling they were for me. So he seen them. Anyway, he said, there, he had one of the big court and he was walking like, like this. He said, I thought he had a, a machete or something up his jacket. So anyway, he's coming anyway, he's fucking turned around, this black lad went both pulled a shotgun on him. But Lee sat quick, he was onto them, he's grabbed the shotgun. And he's like that, wrestling with it like that, and the gun, he's got the gun like this. Like the lad's trying to shoot, and he's like that, the gun like that. But anyway, the fucking thing went off, shot Lee in the foot. So he's pushed the black lad out of the way and pushed the other one and got out of the club. And he had a runner, obviously, you can't feel the pain with the adrenaline, obviously he's been shot. So he's still a runner down the street. And he's hidden in the town centre in, in a doorway. And now, I know this is true because the, um, not on the night, the day after, we used to train the gym. There's me, Peter Ayton, Kenny Bage, Anthony Berg, Paul Cookie, there was um, Ali, Ali, Ali Johnson, Mark Johnson, there was uh, Kenny Bage, there was loads of Ali, little Ali Baines, all, all them were in the gym. There's about 20 of us in the gym. And the, the ambulance driver who, Come and he said, Oh, I picked uh, Lee Duffy up last night. He'd been shot. I went, where, where would he get shot? Because we never heard, because there wasn't, there wasn't phones around like that, like he is now. Anyway, he was telling us a story. We're happy. He said he'd been shot and he was in the doorway. Um, and I was called by the police to come and they did the ambulance and that. So he got him and he cleaned him up and everything and put him in the ambulance and took him to the hospital. He was telling us a story about it and he shook it. Lee shook his hand at him and thanked him. And that lad was telling the story. So later on, with Lee was telling me I knew virtually about the story. I said, oh, did the ambulance driver look like this? How do you know him? Like, Brian? I went, yeah, he's called such and such. That's right. So he knew I knew him. So obviously I was there in the day. And the lads in the gym, we, we knew what happened. But Lee was saying, yeah, I got shot. He was fucking scary. He said, it's fucking hurt. It's really hurt. Big fella, he's fucking done half hurt. You're all going to get shot. You, you, it's no doubt you're all going to get shot. And he said, the way you go on. But he said, he was telling me the story. So... He um, never made a statement, never grasped anyone up and off him. Just, just said he fell over and whatever he said to the police. 
Oh yeah, he got shot in the blues, escaped. That was another attempt on his life. He had the petrol attempt on his life. He had the one where he got shot, like I've just told you, just before this. Uh, and he had the one with the long ones, they tried to shoot him. So he did He did uh, have many attempts on his life, but obviously he, he died in the end. But uh, yeah, just a story, because there's some people who tell the story and just talk shit. Um, I know the full story because I was actually around in them days. I went to the gym, like I told you, and I heard the story from that man who picked him up and took him to the hospital and they had the story of Lee Duffy. So it's not like a story from 30 years ago, the next door neighbour's telling me or the next door, but one tells it, him and she tells him, this is coming from me from in the day. This is why I can tell these stories because I was actually there. So the time that Lee Duffy got shot, I, was, I wasn't there. But I was in that area, in that in the vicinity, in that in that group of people, and knew all about it. And Lee actually, when you befriended me, told me the story, which I'm telling you, what Lee Duffy told me. So good, God bless.